Now buddy, isn't it an absolutely beautiful day to be on board this ERJ-175? Yes, this beautiful little regional airplane. We're right now on a flight from Everett in Washington to San Francisco, right now near Portland. Beautiful. During flight, we can relax here, sitting on our beautiful jump seat. Just like that. Sit down and everything's going well. Maybe it's time for a snack. You know what? I kind of now have the urge to pull the fire handles. Good. I think that's been actually one of the most comprehensive intros I've ever done. I can already end this video. Everything's been said. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members. Like, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Indeed, of course, today we're going to talk about this incredibly viral case that happened last week. Where an off-duty pilot that was transferred to San Francisco from Everett, sitting down in the cockpit's jump seat, suddenly had something the FAA would call a mental breakdown while in the cockpit, where he reached for the fire handles just like I did with the intention to bring down the whole airplane. Obviously, as you can see now, we've successfully pulled the fire handles and that has properly cut the engines. As you can tell, we right now are running on no power. This is not good. In real life, luckily, this off-duty pilot was stopped by the active pilots on the seat. It is, after all, not too easy to pull these handles. It's kind of a multi-step system. You first of all have to twist them out then pull pretty hard. And then in order to actually engage the fire extinguisher, you have to rotate it. Again, something that's not too easy to do, and he failed. He was then kind of invited to leave the cockpit, kind of like um, that, and like that. Come on, open the door. Yeah, perfect. And then he was strapped to this aft a jump seat here, which is normally for the flight attendants. He went really crazy. During his mental breakdown, he said that he he's not okay. Emerson's the name of the airplane pilot. Emerson really then went crazy. He said, you need to cuff me right now or it's going to be bad. Flight attendants heard him saying, I messed everything up and tried to kill everybody. Shortly after, while the plane was still in the air, the pilot told the air traffic control, We've got the guy that tried to shut up the engine down out of the cockpit, and he doesn't sound like he's causing any issues in the back right now. I'll give you a heads up. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engines down uh, out of the cockpit. It doesn't sound like he's causing any issue in the back right now. I, I think he's the dude. Yeah, we want law enforcement as soon as we get on the ground and park. By the way, later in the flight, he went a little crazy trying to open the emergency exit door, which works in the simulator quite well. So no, 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 no. Obviously, that doesn't work in real life at all. The plane then diverted to the nearby airport of Portland to get this guy arrested. And let me tell you, he's in definite trouble. After all, we now obviously have this beautiful Wikipedia page. The Horizon Air Flight 2059 is accounted as an attempted hijacking which is a relatively modern thing for Horizon Air now. I don't, I don't really get it. So very obviously, Emerson here, probably seen on the left side. Man, he doesn't look good. Huh. He now is accused, obviously, of attempted murder, but not only once, but like 80 thousand times for each person that is on the airplane. This is an 80-seat airliner, which is incredibly bad. Now, the reason I uh, took a bite into this uh, raw mushroom earlier on was that he had taken psychedelic mushrooms for the first time about 48 hours earlier, which made him crazy and hallucinative. Obviously, he's planning to not be guilty of attempted murder charges and then he had a nervous breakdown because he'd been struggling with depression and the recent death of a friend and he hadn't slept for 40 hours. I watched several interviews and TV shows about this case and this off-duty pilot who's now accused of doing all this is known by his whole neighborhood as this good dad, this good guy. It just does not seem like his character to yeah. do something like that. That's just not the Joe we know and there must be something, you know, wrong going on with him. Who then suddenly lost his mind on the airplane. He claims the reason why he tried to pull the fire handles was because he thought he wasn't a dream that he just wanted to get out of. So he, he wanted to, to shut the... He, maybe that, that could have been a clue to get out of like a lucid dream. But no, that's not the thing. So everybody, let's maybe go ahead and do some simulation. What would have happened if Emerson was successful at his attempt to pull the um, shut off a valve here? So this is what, what's been done. As you can see, we've got no engine power. We're kind of like turned into a glider now. Um, so there we go. These switches are back. I mean, we can just relight the engine. There we go. APU control. 
This whole case wasn't the most dangerous after all. The plane was at an incredibly high altitude. We just need to turn the APU back on so that we've got power. There we go. We've got power back. That is good. And something we can easily do now is just relight the engines. Restart them. There we go. Power planned. And we can see N2 compressor coming up. We can see N2 compressor of the right engine coming up. There we go. Engine is right back to working. So as you can see, pulling a fire handle isn't an incredibly potent way to crash an airplane, obviously. But of course, something I have to say is that the crew was quite lucky that they were not in a landing situation, for example, in any critical flight we were cruising. I mean, if a complete engine out would have happened during a landing, you'd be in much bigger trouble. So what do I think about this whole case? I think it's, it's really messed up. Obviously, this has brought a new light to mental health. Obviously, we have this guy who really isn't doing well and wasn't doing well. But the abuse of drugs, especially like psychedelic ones, is obviously not the very responsible lifestyle you do have to live as an airline pilot. And especially to be on board of a plane, even as just a passenger. Even if you're just precipitating in the cockpit, puts you into a responsible situation, obviously. Like, on the one hand, we have this guy who really, like, tried to kill these people in the plane within his mental breakdown, but obviously it is clear now that he didn't cause any harm. Because, for once, pulling the T-handles isn't, again, that potent, but also he will stop. My suggestion is that he will definitely go to prison. First of all, he will never be flying again. Obviously, America is incredibly sensitive to what happens inside of a cockpit, which comes in any way close to hijacking. I get it. I think this might be kind of like a, what do you call a canon event where it really changes situation. I'm pretty sure this incident, because, you know, obviously the airline industry needs to maintain the trust of people. No one wants anyone sitting in the cockpit that's high on mushrooms. This is going to put new light on, on the ideas of, okay, how do we keep our pilots mentally stable? And how do we maintain a system so that we know they're not on drugs? That's going to definitely change. Other than that, uh, right now we are in a situation where we couldn't put the engine back up. We're kind of gliding down now. I'm not very sure we're going to make it without the engine here. I think for the rest of us, it's just a life lesson how just a one single event can change your entire life and don't do the drugs. You know, I feel like the FAA in America is struggling a little bit with the discussion of mental health because it can seem hard for pilots to seek help because they know if they do officially seek help, they're going to lose their murder medical certificate and will never be flying again. And, and that's the big dilemma, which is very counterproductive because now people try to hide their problems because they don't want to get stuck up by the FAA. It makes sense. And so I think it will make sense to change things around. You should rather be awarded for seeking help rather than the opposite. And that is losing your license. Come on, let me try to land now. Uh, we're looking actually quite good. This was a good climb. Can we put the landing gear down? Man? Yeah, we can. All right, never mind. Hydraulics aren't even that bad. Oh god, I can't pull up. I can't pull up. I can't pull up. Oh my god. What a proper crash. There you go. Yes. Of course, an airliner like this, even in the worst case scenario, can still kind of glide down. That was an incredibly hard land. So, this is definitely going to be an interesting story to follow along. What's going to happen? Honestly, stuff like this has not really happened before, right? How do you deal with this, especially as a court? Other than that, we learn, don't take drugs, especially if you're going to be inside of an airplane as a pilot. I think that shouldn't be that hard to do. Am I right? So, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, as always. Good night. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Duram, Ragings, Met RLG, Matt Van Z, Moritz, Bellhausen, Knott's Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.